this in Guyana and uh, my name is Vidyard Kisun and we're at Mori House Trust which is a building in a heritage building in Georgetown which has been converted into a place where discussions could happen and for today we were going to be looking at um, three presentations one from me one from Roger Nurse who is the Electoral University of Guyana and one from Lanandar Singh who is also Electoral University of Guyana and then have a discussion about how we promote open hardware, open source hardware and hardware freedom in Guyana. So what on earth are we really talking about? So to give a little bit of background, um, I'm going to look at open source software, open design, open source hardware and the concept of hardware freedom. So what is open? And I took this quotation from the book Open Design um, by John Takara, um, in which he wrote that openness in short is more than a commercial and cultural issue. It's a matter of survival. Systemic challenges such as climate change or resource depletion, these problems of moral bankruptcy, cannot be solved using the same techniques that caused them in the first place. Open research, open governance, and open design are preconditions for the continuous collaborative social mode of inquiry and action that are needed. So in a way, this is a whole new idea in terms of holding things to intellect to, uh, under the regime of intellectual property and patenting. And so this is a whole new idea of trying to share knowledge and to build on it. So the origins of this idea is in open source software. And open source software, for those of you who don't know, it's software for which the code, or the blueprint, is shared widely, in which improvements can be made to the soft software and released, in which new products can be created and released, in which the goal is not always profit, but just creation for open and common use. It's sometimes free, meaning free of cost, and it's often subject to peer review, collaboration across many boundaries, and the collaboration has been enabled by the growth in the use of the internet. So open design using Wikipedia as our source, it's a nice um, definition here. Open design is the development of physical products, machines and systems through use of publicly shared design information. And um, in that definition, I just want to look a little bit about some of the interesting things around open design. Um, collective invention, the trends in open design, and some of the current projects. I just want to declare at this point that before coming up with Hardware Freedom Day and, and thinking about it, this is the first time I had ever heard about any of these things. So it's very interesting for me. Okay, so open design, collective invention. And I just extracted a table there from a paper that was done in 2003 by Peter Meyer from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Um, in which he looked at this idea of collective invention in which communities and persons, and, uh, uh, laborers and others working um, on specific things, um, how they came together to invent. And he considered the steam engine case, James Watts, who invented the steam engine in the late 1700s, but his patent expired in the 1800s. Now, when James Watt had a patent on the, 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 the steam engine, so no one else could do anything with the steam engine. But after, he, um, after the patent expired, a lot of other people got involved in the steam engine. Now, and of course, the, the steam engines were used in, in Cornwall in England to pump out water from the coal mines. The next um, episode of Collective Invention that he looks at is the Cleveland District about the blast furnaces used in the, industrial relation, in the Industrial Revolution in terms of using iron. And again, where the iron makers in the Cleveland District in North, Northeast England, they used to come together and visit each other to see how they were improving um, on the design of these blast furnaces and using them. Then the Bessemer Steel, the U.S. mass production of steel, Again, there was a patent um, pool agreement, and then that agreement expanded, and you had all these other um, ways of collaboration, of getting investment, and so to improve on the design. In the 1970s, when microprocessors became available, the um, microcomputer... Oh, hi. hi, how are you doing? 
And the other episode of collective invention apparently was in the microcomputer clubs that in the early 70s, when the uh, microprocessors were first invented, it seems as though um, there were groups. There's this group called the Homebrew Computer Club and all of that. And they used to meet and improve on the chips and build the computers. So this is very interesting. And then, of course, Linux, the whole open source case, um, with looking at the internet, uh, when the internet came up, and then um, Linus Torvalds started his idea of making um, software for a PC, uh, a Unix for PC. So, in Guyana, in, in, I always I was wondering what open design meant in Guyana. I thought it in terms of our architecture. The, two, the thing that came up to mind, I put this picture here of a Mandir. Because no one is sure what the origins of this particular style of these old temples, you know, there are no temples in Indivitur like this. These are all built with wood and have this pagoda kind of uh, look. So it was this idea that perhaps there were artisans, and this is the way sometimes, um, if you look at the way our buildings were done, it couldn't be one person who had a patent for all of this architecture and the Demerara shutters and all of that. So obviously there was a, a, a sharing in terms of how our buildings were designed to accommodate our weather and the peculiarities of um, our geography, right? So, and I also had jokingly um, thought about something like the Tapir, which was a car that used to be built in Guyana, and how the guys up in, um, in, in Skeldon, how they, up in the upper quarantine, how they continue to use those vehicles, they well, and, and sometimes those vehicles have been completely um, done over, the engines are no, you know, they're, that's, there's all sorts of things that are happening, but that's again the kind of ingenuity of engineering and knowing what's going on. Okay, so what are the trends now in open design? Apparently, first of all, you've got people working together for the common good, so they volunteer their skills and times on projects to create products which can be used to better humanity. Then there are some projects which are really advanced um, and which are just ideas, and there's collaboration between um, manufacturers and other foundations and institutions to share resources to build those projects. And then there's the application of high-tech solutions to local development, and this introduces this interesting thing called 3D printing, which I have only become aware of within the last six months. I didn't even know something like 3D printing existed, and it was that's also interesting. Um, I don't even know if in Guyana anybody is using 3D printing in manufacturing. So this is just an example of some two of the projects which I took off of the Wikipedia. One is RepRap, which is the general purpose 3D printer, which makes the structures and the components for the open design projects, but in itself it makes its own components, the RepRap um, print, 3D printing. I think for those of us who don't know what 3D printing is, it's a way of creating, what happens is that the layers, it, you take a drawing, a CAD drawing, a 3D virtual CAD drawing, and you actually create the um, product um, by layering all the uh, materials. So it's, um, I think the design people will tell you, manufacturing design people will tell you that odd, under other kinds of um, design, what you would do is you would drill and extract. Um, it's extractive. Um, here with 3D printing, you're actually adding layers. So it's a very um, different thing. It's something very interesting to research. And the other thing is an open source guitar kit, which I thought was interesting with a 3D printed body. And again, 3D printing to create the guitar, um, which could be used. And there's some YouTube clips and so about 3D printing, which I think, um, you know, I hope that designers in Guyana, design engineers in Guyana can have a look at. Um, so open source hardware basically is hardware created and shared with all the design components. In other words, not just the software, the schematics, the drawing, the bills of quantity, the hardware definition language code, everything that has to go to make us use that open source hardware. Um, that goes on so different kinds of hardware, electronics, cameras, robotics, computers, um, and, and different other things. So what's hardware freedom? The Open Hardware and Design Alliance modified the definition of um, free software to say that hardware freedom is basically um, hardware that has uh, these following four things. First of all, you have the freedom to use the device for any purpose. Then the second, free, uh, second freedom is that the freedom to study how the device works and to change it to make it do what you wish. So therefore, you have to have access to the complete design drawings and everything as a precondition for this. 
Freedom tools to redistribute. You have the freedom to redistribute the device and our design, so therefore you can remanufacture it. And freedom three is that you have the freedom to improve the device and or design and release your improvements and modified versions in general to the public so that the whole community benefits. Access to the complete design is a precondition to this. And again, sorry, this definition of freedom doesn't necessarily mean free in price. Uh, people might charge money to, to do this, but the idea is it's the licensing. So that's just our general introduction here about what is my learnings about open design, open source hardware, and hardware freedom. And I found interesting as I was doing research for this, this very interesting book called Open Design Now, which is available under Creative Commons um, license at opendesignnow.org, which looks a lot at the thinking um, and the philosophy behind open design and how and collaborative invention and collaborative innovation as well and turns um, solutions, problem solving, out of the box of patenting and hiding into um, something that is different. Thank you.